Welcome back. Okay, so I actually wanted to take a quick break here and show you guys how to um, put in the debug number. So when we are going through and, you know, setting all these overrides uh, for these particular things, it's really helpful to actually have, you know, the prim number hovering, you know, right above the, the actual, you know, cabinet area. That way you're not constantly having to try to remember this is zero, this is one, this is two, three, four, and so on and so forth. It's, it's nice just to have a quick reference, so uh, that's what I want to actually hook up. And you know, I was looking at this, and I think that I'm going to add just another separator there uh, for these guys. It really helps it just kind of keep it clear that this is, you know, all these parameters belong to this particular override. The single separator wasn't doing it for me. All right, so uh, let's go and get this all sorted out. So. Um, what I want to do is put a number, you know, that represents the prim number right here. But I want to actually put, you know, some real geometry up here. So it's easy for you to identify which thing you're trying to override. All right, so I am going to do an object merge node up here. And this one is going to get this sort one node. Now, uh, you could do that. You could just drag and drop that over. It's always good practice to put in a null node. And we'll just put in... Um, cab out cab prims oh, I already used that so now it'll add a one to it so there we go I'm gonna not put that in for the transform object I'm gonna drag and drop that in for the object one there all right cool so now we can work with just this stuff so what I want to do here is uh, set the set an attribute to the actual prim number so let's do that first so I'm going to drop down a wrangle node here so let's do that. We'll uh, call this uh, set prim ID, and then inside of that wrangle node, all we got to do, uh, let's just, uh, well, no, let's put it on the prims here. Yeah, I'm going to say i at ID is equal to, and I wanted uh, i at ID. There we go. Is equal to at prim num. All right. So now we just start storing the ID because the prim nums might change here. Uh, after we start to uh, process the, ge the geometry here. All right, and then I'm going to do an attribute promote, and I'm going to promote this ID down to points. And the reason for that is because when I use the add node, it'll actually blow away that particular um, ID value if I keep it on the primitives. All right, so now I'm going to do an add node here, and I am going to delete geometry, keep points, and we're going to do by group and we're going to do groups of n points but we need to do the sort by x i believe it is or y let's do the sort here all right so let's uh, do a sort by y yeah so i want to get these top primitives because basically i want to find a point right in the middle of each one of these primitives and then just move it up a little bit and copy a you know a number to that particular point all right, so we still have all our IDs, that's great. And then I'm going to do a wrangle node. I'm going to get rid of all the uh, primitives that are at the bottom of this bounding box here. So uh, let's go to let's go to prims. Yeah, let's try prims first here. Let's do a vector uh, box min is equal to our get bb box min. So we'll get the lowest point out of all this geometry. And so we just put in zero for that. That's the first input. And we're going to say if uh, at p is equal to boxman dot y, then let's remove you because you are the bottom primitive. So we're going to say remove prim on the zero. We'll say at prim num and one to remove all associated points. And we'll actually do like maybe we'll do less than or equal. Oh. <laughs> I did at p. At p dot y is equal to this guy right here, if I can do it. There we go. All right, there we go. So now I'm left with just the top ones up there, which is great. So at this point now, uh, we can do a carve. And the carve makes it really easy to get a point right in the middle. So if I just do 0.5 here and then set it to extract, I'm left with these points right here. And You'll, you'll notice that they're not ordered or anything like that. And we also, uh, looks like we lost the ID value as well 
over here. And so we still had it when we we're up here. So let's just do an attribute transfer. You can always do this with a wrangle node too, but this will just make it easier. It's just a debug thing anyways. So let's just hook this up and we'll just transfer the ID. And you can see now we have the proper IDs there. So you could actually go and do a sort node now at this point and use that attribute. So do a point uh, sort and then we'll do a by attribute and then you just do a by ID and now they're ordered, right? So now we have zero, one, two, three, four, whereas before it was all over the place. So sort node super handy for a lot of things. Cool. All right, so with that all done, let's loop through each point now. So let's do a for each point. And so for each point, I want to take that ID value and I want to promote it to a detail attribute just because it's going to be, it'll make it easier for us to access it inside of a font node. So now on a per point basis, we have the ID over here. So I can drop down a font node now and write a little expression in here for the text. And so to do that, we do two back ticks and then we do a detail and we want to get the information from this particular node. So I'm going to call this get uh, ID. So now we just do dot dot forward slash get ID. And the attribute we want to get is that ID attribute. And zero just because it's a single number there. So now if I look at my font node, we have a four. Super cool. All right, so in the font node, let's put this down to like 0.25 and level detail all the way down to the bottom. I just want a really simple uh, geometric version of this. And then let's uh, use a match size node and just situate it so it's sitting right on the grid perfectly. Cool. So then we can use a copy to points node and wire those two guys in. And now, if I were to look at this at the end here, you can see now we have these numbers that represent the primitive numbers. So it makes it a lot easier for us to you know, set our overrides with this uh, information. All right, I think I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Let's actually template our prop here and uh, take a look and see what the size yeah, is way too big there. Uh, one thing we could do is um, move it up a little bit based off of the uh, count, uh, the counter, which is all the way down here. So the counter height, so we can copy this parameter. And on the origin, we can just move, actually, we need to do it after the match size. Let's just do it down here. Once we're done doing all of them, we'll just put it all down here. So let's uh, paste our reference into there, and then let's multiply it by something like three or maybe uh, 2.5. That way it's sitting, always sitting just a bit above the counter. And I think those numbers are a little big for my taste. Let's do uh, one five. Yeah, that's better. Cool. So the other thing we're gonna need in our interface is the option to turn that on and off. I don't want it always there. So let's go and get a toggle and I'm just gonna drag and drop that right above my overrides. And we're gonna call this our cab um, debug num toggle like so we'll say uh, show debug numbers very cool and then we'll just default it to zero which is great and now all we need to do at the very bottom here is put down a switch node and a null node so we'll put the null node in for the first input the numbers in for the second input. We'll call this debug switch. And we'll just copy this parameter from our controls and paste it into that switch node. So now I have control over whether or not, whether or not they're being displayed or not. It'd be cool to also colorize these. Let's uh, give it some color. So I'm going to give it kind of a indie pixel reddish orange. Yeah, looks pretty cool. You can also give it some alpha as well. So to do that, this is all vertex uh, alpha. I'm just going to call this alpha. You just do a um, at uh, capital A alpha is equal like 0 0.5, something like that. Yeah, so now they're, you know, slightly transparent, which makes them feel even more debuggy. 
All right, so let's do a null node and we'll call this out debug numbers or just nums. Yep. And let's include it with the final assembly. So let's add another slot and uh, let's just drag and drop this guy into there. Very cool. So let's take a look at that. Yeah, so, you know, it's just a quality of life thing. Just makes it easier for end users, whoever's using your HCA, even yourself, to um, quickly identify which override you're working on. So now you can come into your overrides here and uh, say like, oh yeah, so that's three. So I want to add, you know, even more drawers to that one or less drawers kind of thing. Yeah. Cool. And then you can just turn it off when you're ready to uh, bake it down to an actor or static mesh. All right. So that's what I wanted to show in uh, this video. Let's keep moving forward.